I would now like to introduce Steve. He is a local business person and family man who enjoys giving back to the community uh, to pay it forward with the people, many of whom were strangers who helped him to get back on track from a spiraling, spiraling world of hurt, anger and depression. He is also the husband of one of our other brave storytellers, Sharon, who has already shared her story here on the stage tonight. Please share your applause for Steve Simmons as he mics up to share with you his story. So many of you know me as Steve Simmons, the persuader, trainer, facilitator, keynote speaker, business coach. But what many of you might not know is that I suffered from severe depression for most of my early life. However, in saying that, in those days, I didn't know what depression was. My family life early on was described by some people as brutal, similar to being in a prison camp in World War II. So that gives you a bit of an idea of the type of things that we had to endure as children, being brought up by my alcoholic father, who for many years mistreated us through that period of time. And one of the things he did that for was apparently to make us stronger. And in some ways, it did. But what it did do for me personally is cause a lot of issues around sadness and then keeping out of that sadness, anger. And particularly in my early, late teens and early 20s, I was always forever getting into trouble for fighting, arguing, debating. I would debate anybody on a street corner, just simply going up to them, and the bigger the person, the better. And often I did that for my own entertainment. However, in saying that, I fell into becoming a debt collector. So a lot of my early life actually suited me as a debt collector because you had to be really aggressive. And I wasn't a big person, but I was certainly very aggressive. Anyway, to get on further in the firm, they said, oh, Steve, you need to go to university and you need to go and get a degree. I thought, OK, I'll give it a shot. I applied for university. I really didn't think that I would get in. But lo and behold, University of Western Sydney allowed me in, which was great. And I started in my first year and I was really enthusiastic and I thought, I can do better from where I've been. I can do better for myself. But my anger issues started causing problems for me at uni as well. And after threatening a couple of my lecturers through pure frustration, it was recommended that I go to the university psychologist. I thought, OK, fine, I'll do that. I want to stay at uni. So I went to the university psychologist office, had the appointment made. I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, I don't really understand why I'm here. I'm not sure what's going on. I should be able to deal with this myself. Anyway, I stood up and I started walking away and I thought, no, I'm getting the hell out of here. And as I did that, the lady came out of her office and said, oh, Steve, come on in. And as polite as I am, I thought, well, I better go and do that. That meeting, even though I almost didn't make it, changed my life. She explained to me what depression was. She explained to me the impacts of the abuse that I'd had as a child and how that was now causing problems for me as an adult. And it's taken a long time to get to where I am today. But one of the steps of recovery was to write things down, either as in a journal or as a poem. And one of the poems I wrote back in 1994, I thought I'd like to share with you tonight. And it's called My Dad. When others talk of childhood, most remember just the good. All I remember is the bad, especially the man who says he is my dad. Memories of mum and dad arguing and screaming, it seems like 24 hours a day will these memories ever go away. Family life has lost its meaning. Did I cause this unhappiness? That's my guess. Look, dad, I'm forever doing my best. I'm trying to make you proud so you will be pleased. But I still feel guilty. Is it me? So why can't we be the perfect family? Dad, the belts and bruises you inflict don't hurt me one little bit, but the words you use, you think you're smart, hurt me, humiliate me, intimidate me, break my heart. 
that all my life I have given and all my life many people have taken. I believed I was flawed and at fault, but now I know I'm mistaken. Dad, I have lived close to death many times, taken the blame and paid the price of others' crimes. I'm hardened and weary, but not full of hate. My life is good because I know it is not too late. I've stopped trying so hard to please you, to make you proud of me. I now please me and I'm very proud of myself and I am so free. I'm happy with who and what I am and though it is sad, a father you will never be, I pray you will not end up a lonely and bitter old man. I look forward to my future and when I take a wife, I will ensure with all my might that I will not wreck my child's life by loving my kids right. However, going through that period and working on myself for so long has got to me where I am today. And where am I today? I have an awesome, lovely wife, Sharon Simmons. I've got two wonderful kids. I live in an amazing area called Bathurst, which is surrounded and filled of amazing and fantastic people, many of them my friends here, who are also uh, being support uh, supportive of me through tough times recently, and some of you will know about that. But I guess my message is that when you're feeling down, and particularly for males, it is so hard to ask for help, and when you have anger issues, know that they're not right. It's not right to be like that all the time. When you're feeling sad, often, it's not right to feel like that. And when you start feeling like that, talk to people. Talk to your mates. Find out what's going on with you and find out what's going on with them. And then go and get some professional help as well. Go and see a psychologist, a counsellor, a psychiatrist. It doesn't matter. Somebody that you trust, somebody that you feel comfortable with, go and talk to them. Because it really, really is important. I've lost so many of my friends through suicide over the last few years that I am just over it. I just never want to see that again. And some of those people are the most optimistic, happy, wonderful guys you could ever meet. And I just don't want to see that happen to anyone, ever. So please, I implore you, go and get some help if you feel you need it. Or you just want to have a chat, find somebody like me and we'll go and have a coffee somewhere or a beer. Well, Sharon doesn't find out I'm down the pub. Uh, <laughs> Any time. Thank you very much. <laughs>